Hello, this is astrologer coach Sonia Francis and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming full moon which will be in 21 and a half degrees of Libra on April 10th on the west coast in the US, April 11th on the east coast in the US um, and the sun will oppose the moon at that time as it is with all full moons and there's a lot to cover with this full moon video because this is also connected to the cardinal T-square that involves Uranus, Jupiter, and Pluto that we've been talking about for quite a while now. And while all of this is going on, Mercury, Venus, Saturn are all stationing. They're all moving slower and therefore they're more exalted in the sky right now. So this is definitely <laughs> going to be a packed next two weeks. Uh, we're also going to be talking in more detail uh, about the station and retrograde phases in our next forecasting forum. If you're interested in joining us, stay tuned until the end. We'll talk more about that at the end of this video. So let's dive in into this full moon uh, section. For the next two weeks, we're looking for balance. We're more aware than ever that something needs to be brought back into alignment and needs to be integrated. And the balance in question here is between ourselves, which is symbolized by Aries, and others, which is symbolized by Libra. Now, it's important here to realize that relationships are essential to our existence, and therefore they play a really crucial role in defining and reaching our personal goals and personal desires. And so, again, this is that Libra-Aries balance that we're trying to create here for the next two weeks. And of course, all of this will resonate more with you if you have personal planets or angles within two degrees of the full moon. And I will circle back to that later at the end of the video as well. But you may want to check out my video on how to uh, read your birth chart. So, but let's look at the full moon. We're also invited to look at the balance between the feminine and masculine within ourselves, which is very a Libran task, right? Uh, it has to do also with the feminine and masculine balance in our relationships and in, in the world that we live in. And so here we're, we can ask ourselves these questions, where has this gone out of balance? Where is there not a balance between uh, feminine and masculine in our lives? And what happens when there's too much of either or too little of one or the other, right? So just take a look at that. And as always, you know, all the questions from this video are also available on my website at astrologycoach.com via my weekly forecasts after April 9th. I will post that at the at the end of uh, at the day of April 9th, and so you can read it after that date. But you can also sign up for my weekly forecasts to receive them via email to email us at info at astrologycoach.com and just write weekly forecasts in the subject line. All right, so that's available, but let's uh, go back to the full moon in Libra. The sun in Aries, which is one component of that, that full moon placement, right, is right now connecting to Uranus. And Uranus is the planet of freedom, equality, progress. And so with Uranus aligning with the sun, we're being asked to really break away from whatever has prevented us from stepping up our game. And, you know, shifts are really happening everywhere in the world right now. And this is a very potent time to be alive in. And, and I know I've talked about this before in, in previous videos, but it's really a time to develop some courage and awareness. You know, where do we want to step up in our lives? And if we made a big leap, where might we land? So we can ask ourselves these questions for the next two weeks in particular, and this is also a call to look at the roles that assertion and independence play in our lives. So, you know, we're really needing to find a way to, to develop a healthy sense of self. You know, with the sun and Uranus and Aries, we're really being invited to be totally honest with ourselves, with others, you know, allow that higher vibration of Aries to shine through, which is all about courage and openness towards the new directness and a healthy sense of identity, right? So the spotlight is really on ourselves with, with the Aries energy. And we talked a little bit about that also already during the new moon in Aries. But now with this full moon, we also need to take a look at the other side of things, which is the moon in Libra. And the moon in Libra 
aligns with Jupiter. Jupiter is also in Libra right now. And so this planet symbolizes growth, expansion, new perspectives. Right? So this emphasizes really a new way of looking at our collaborations, you know, a need for new perspectives when it comes to anything that we're doing with another person, one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether that's personal or business. And it's we're really being asked to look at, you know, are we being objective? Is there uh, a sense of equality? Is there a sense of balance, a sense of justice? Is there consideration in our relationships? So as you can tell, you know, the spotlight with this full moon really swings over to our relationships. And now we're needing to integrate those two polar opposites. Now, with Uranus opposing the moon at it, with this full moon chart, we're also invited to pay attention to both our feelings and our emotional responses and to the insights that we have about personal progress and any kind of future visions that we identify with. So questions you can ask yourself here is how might we express ourselves truthfully without compromise and still consider other people's feelings and needs and maybe even our also our own within dealings with other people now another component with this full moon chart is because we're dealing with this t-square and the full moon is in alignment with this t-square that's been in place for quite a while now pluto in capricorn is the focal point or the you know the top of that t of that triangle right the top of that t square and it's a cardinal t square so all the 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 signs involved in this t square uh, are cardinal energies like startup energies aries libra capricorn right and so we're very well may experience some tension and intensity in these next two weeks uh, especially also because Pluto is stationing uh, during the time of the full moon. It's moving slower. So this amplifies this energy further and is really, really putting extra pressure on our need for change, expansion, and making it in the world. So the, so the solution with any T-square is always the opposite of the focal point, and that in, in this case is cancer. And so the solution to this intense combination here is self-care, nurturing ourselves, making sure that we have what we need so we can be fully focusing on what we're trying to build and manifest out there in the real world. Now, with Pluto moving so slowly and getting ready for its five-month retrograde phase, that makes the energy, of course, very heightened, and so we have, um, we're really focusing on investigating anything dysfunctional within our businesses, our governments, our long-term goals, right? And so we're being asked to eliminate or transform whatever is no longer in alignment with our soul's purpose or our soul's passions. So we're also going to go into this in more detail in our next forecasting forum because we will be talking about the Pluto station, Pluto retrograde in relationship to our own birth charts. So if, if that's of interest to you, this will be on Wednesday, April 12th, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. London Time. So if you want to register for that, you can go to my website at astrologercoach.com and I will talk more about that again towards the end of the video as well. Now, one way or another, we have been talking about this T-square with Pluto being the focus point since November of last year, right? And I'm sure some of you who watch my videos on a regular basis, you do remember this. So as you can see, this is definitely a process. It's not an event. It's not something like just a minor transit, you know, where you're dealing with it for like a couple of days or for maybe a week or two, and then it's over. No, this is really a long-term thing we're doing here. And so it's a process where we need to observe what needs to happen in our lives. And, and if we're to make the best out of this transformative aspect, we really need to ask ourselves, what's working in our lives? What isn't? What needs to change? What demands a new perspective? You know, where do we need to let go of fears and attachments in particular? Because, you know, Pluto can very much be connected to fears and attachments and to where we feel disempowered or we want to feel more empowered. 
Now, this last question is very important about fears and attachments because the Pluto station will emphasize that, you know, it will emphasize that for this next two weeks, for this full moon, but also during the time of the station of this planet. So let go of anything that doesn't empower you or your long-term goals. That is really the message. And so deep structural changes really need to occur in our own lives and collectively. So you can ask yourself here for the next two weeks, what am I building long-term that supports my sole purpose or my passions? What am I building that doesn't? And these are really important questions. And just remember with any of my questions that I'm asking always, you know, you don't have to answer them right away. This is not an intellectual practice here. This is really about trying to tap into your inner knowingness. And you can do that by meditating on these questions by journaling on these questions or by just allowing these questions to be in the back of your mind for the next two weeks and just seeing what arises, what comes up, you know, let yourself marinate in these questions. And then another question you can ask yourself, you know, what role does fear play in my life? And that, of course, is always a powerful question to ask, even when Pluto is not stationing. But of course, with Pluto stationing, that question is probably going to be a little bit more in our faces at that time. And so you can also ask yourself, where do I have attachments to the past out of fear? You know, where am I trying to, you know, hold on to stuff because I'm scared that, you know, things will go out of control, you know, or things will, will start to unravel on me. You know, where do I feel a need to protect myself or keep things really close to the vest? So these are just things you want to take a look at because, with this planet stationing, you will feel some of that show up in your life, you know, where you, you becoming more aware of where you have these tendencies. So take a look at that. And to have a better idea of what the whole T-square is all about, I just want to invite you to read my article on the subject that I wrote several weeks ago. And if you haven't seen it yet or you haven't read it yet, you know, email us at info at astrologercoach.com and my assistant We'll email that article to you and please be so kind and write T-square in the subject line. That way my assistant knows that that's what you're looking for. All right. Now, um, another part of this full moon chart is Mars because Mars is the ruler of Aries, one of the polarities we're dealing with. And Mars is currently in Taurus and is making a trine to Pluto in Capricorn and a sextile to Chiron in Pisces. So what does that mean? What are those aspects all about? Well, the trine to Pluto is definitely a strong energy for steady, practical, down-to-earth work, work on a project. So if you have a project that you're currently working on, that's a great way to just keep trotting away, keep doing the work, keep manifesting what it is that you're trying to manifest. And as best as you can, you know, just leverage this powerful mixture of energies and go after the things you have been wanting to manifest for a while. And because Pluto is involved, of course, you know, if possible, fulfill on your soul's purpose, you know, things you feel passionate about. And anything that we really do feel deeply passionate about and that we feel in complete alignment with in our deepest core, you know, like the, the, the heart energy, the, the gut energy, you know, that those alignments, that's very likely part of our soul's journey and our soul purpose. So you can ask yourself just to, to identify what that is. What moves me? What turns me on? And not just on a physical level, but also on an emotional and spiritual level. And, and those are the questions that will guide you to really understand a little bit better. What is my soul purpose? What is my soul journey all about? And if you had all the resources that you needed right now, what might you choose to manifest? And the reason why that question is really important, because very often we think to ourselves, well, you know, I would do this or I would manifest that or I would go after this if only, you know, I didn't have to worry about, you know, paying my bills or if I didn't have to worry about, you know, how much money I have in my savings account. And, and here's the thing, though, when we compromise ourselves in that way where we are not going after our sole purpose because we're we're afraid that we won't have the resources that's usually a clear sign that we're coming from fear 
You know, we, we're, we're trying to stay attached to the old. We're trying to stay attached to what we know kind of worked in the past. So you want to kind of like think to yourself, so what if I had all the resource sources that I needed? What if it wasn't a consideration? What might I choose to manifest? And that's how you can zoom into, you know, where you need to be focusing and where you need to be going in terms of your soul purpose and your passion for life. Now, the sextile to Chiron could inspire us to take actions towards healing our emotional and spiritual wounds. And so if we can allow the inner masculine that we all have, you know, whether you're a man or a woman, we all have that inner masculine, which is like, you know, taking action giving things, doing things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When if we can allow that inner masculine to protect and co-create with our inner feminine, which also all of us have, which is about allowing for intuition to come through, receiving things, being open to receiving. Those are all feminine traits and there are many more of course. If we can connect the two, we will go further than we can imagine. And that's really an important point here with that sextile to Chiron. And we need to allow ourselves to do some healing around our inner masculine, inner feminine. You know, how do we relate to both of those sides of ourselves? And, you know, if you're more comfortable with one or the other, it might be a good idea to take a look at what kind of healing or loving movement you can take to connect with the other side that you're not so comfortable with. And so this may ask us to slow down a little bit because it's more of an inner process and to check in with our intuition, with our values, and to let ourselves be guided to the next actions that we need to be taking. Now, compassion and humility can really help us with this process. And you can ask yourself here, when I'm in the flow of things, am I the doer or does doing simply occur? Does it simply happen? And really check, you know, when you ask yourself that question, really check. Don't just let your mind answer and make assumptions from what you already know or what you think you already know. Just really check with your direct experience. When I'm in the flow of things, am I the doer or does doing simply happen? Very, very powerful question. And this question is, is really wonderful to investigate because very often we have belief systems in place that will not have us look at that question from, from an angle that actually serves us. So really investigate that question. Now Mars is also making an inconjunct to the moon in Libra, a quincux. So we feel really uneasy about something for the next two weeks and we must develop an inner awareness of what exactly needs adjusting. You know, and, and the thing here is that the question we can ask ourselves here, because it's such an, it's more of an inner uneasiness that we're feeling, what is a realistic promise that I could make to others at this time? Because Mars and Taurus sort of like there's a, a, a focus towards ourselves and what we value, but the moon in Libra is about other people. So what could we, a realistic promise that we could make towards others at this time? And a good place to aim with this question is towards, you know, relating, collaborating, our, you know, one-on-one -on -one relationships, business, personal, whatever it may be, right? Also, ask yourself, if I were to be absolutely realistic and honest with myself, right, Mars and Taurus, how much can I really do for others right now without compromising my own values? In other words, whilst I'm still honoring myself, right? So it's very important that Mars and Taurus feels like you're honoring yourself, that you're honoring your own values. Uh, but at the same time, there's also that wanting to really connect with other people. So this question can also be extremely valuable to ask for the next two weeks. Now, the other polar opposite to that Aries energy is Libra. And Venus is the ruler of Libra. And so therefore, we also want to look at what Venus is doing in this full moon chart. And Venus is currently in Pisces, aligning with Chiron in Pisces and making a square to Saturn in Sagittarius. So what does all that mean? Now the conjunction to Chiron gives us a nudge towards learning to love ourselves and healing deep fears of not 
being good enough. And this is something that very often stems from childhood messages that we've received or experiences that we've had, that there's a part of us, like usually a younger part, a child part of us, that doesn't feel like we're good enough. And so we're really getting the opportunity here to heal that sense of feeling separate from other people or not feeling good enough within ourselves. And this healing happens much faster, of course, when we're open to forgiving and embracing ourselves exactly as we are and as we are not. And so I just wanted to check, you know, for the next two weeks, where are you with this process? Because again, this is a process. This is something that we're you know, we, we have definitely been dealing with this year already since January, but it's also something that we're dealing with, you know, on a, on a yearly basis. Every time Venus comes around and conjunct with Chiron every year, you know, we're going to be dealing with this. So this is a process. But in this full moon chart, Venus is also squaring Saturn. And this is a process of maturing that requires that we adjust and stay flexible. So it's also, it also lets us know that it's, it's really wise to double check our assumptions and our belief systems and to ask ourselves, do any of these belief systems that we have or assumptions or expectations that we have in life, do any of them need updating? And this is something we've definitely been also dealing with for a while now. We've been asking ourselves these questions for a while now. And, and in this full moon chart, it's just, again, you know, more prevalent, especially you know, because uh, Venus and Saturn will be stationing as well at the time of this full moon. And with Venus in Pisces, we are invited to bring an open heart to this process, you know, and, and to have compassion towards ourselves in this process. And to, as best as we can, you know, to slow down, take it one day at a time. You know, Saturn is not a fast-moving energy even though in Sagittarius it may want to move faster than it can. And Venus in Pisces is not a fast-moving energy either. That's more of an introverted energy. So we're really being asked to take it one day at a time. Something very profound is happening to us here with this square. And this is not the first time we've been feeling this. You know, we have the opportunity here to change our relationships and whole lives for the better. You know, so for the next two weeks, keep asking yourself, what shifts might be possible for me if I just let my mind and heart stay open, wide open? And where would self-responsibility and intuitive knowingness meet? Where can they meet? See, Saturn has a lot to do with taking responsibility, right? Self-responsibility. And Venus in Pisces has everything to do with tapping into our own intuitive knowingness when it comes to relating to ourselves, to our higher selves, to source, to other people, um, connecting with other people. So it's definitely like, you know, where can those two places meet? Self-responsibility and inner knowingness. I think that's a very beautiful question. And, you know, do your best to observe any reoccurring thoughts. You know, those are very, very powerful because reoccurring thoughts in the end, that's what beliefs are and beliefs are do create our reality. What we believe to be true, we will look for that out there in the world and therefore we will attract all the things that are in alignment with our beliefs. And so that, that's why it creates our reality. So taking responsibility for our reoccurring thoughts, for our beliefs is very important. And if our beliefs about ourselves, about others, about the world have a low vibration, or something that doesn't really serve us, you know, we will only be able to create something that is in alignment with that same low vibration. So really pay attention, you know, and take responsibility for how, what, how you are moving with these beliefs that are running, going on in your head, right? And look to see what serves, what doesn't. And as best as you can, you know, align yourself with your higher truth, with a higher path. And use your intuition and your own sense of maturity in connection with this. You know, that's really highly recommended because as you try to understand a little bit better what your beliefs are and what these reoccurring thoughts are that you, that you believe to be true, like that you really believe that they're the truth, 
you want to make sure that that that's really something that serves you rather than something that's creating a reality that's not healthy for you. So use maturity, use a sense of intuitiveness when it comes to exploring this. Now, as I mentioned already, Venus and Saturn, of course, are stationing at this time as well. So this, of course, amplifies this even further. So ask yourself, what assumptions do I make about myself, others, and life? And how can I embody my truth 5% more fully? And, and, you know, your truth is really something that has to feel in connection with you. It's not about thinking it to be true. It's about feeling it. You know, the truth is, is, is not something that you can think into, into making it true. It, it has to be something that has to really be a, a full, in full vibration with your whole body, you know, with your heart. And so another question you can ask, what might be possible if I decided to walk my talk? So that's obviously a, a little bit of a challenging question that can sometimes create some discomfort. But if we start to observe, you know, uh, the things that we say to ourselves are we capable to actually walking that talk? And that is really where, where true maturity comes in. You know, if we're, if we're capable of doing that, we are really truly mature and, and in our truth. That's the moment we really are in our truth. A couple of other questions that I have for you here, because I think this is a very powerful aspect. How can my intuition support me in all of this? And when do I ignore my intuitive senses? You know, pay attention to that because very often we don't even realize when we're ignoring this intuitive knowingness, you know, this sensing, this feeling of like, ah, this is, this is where I, I'm feeling more pulled to or where I'm feeling more of a resonance with. And then the mind comes in and goes, oh, but that's not how we always have done it. And this is not really what other people would do and blah, blah, blah. And then the mind gives you reasons why you shouldn't be moving with that intuitive sensing. So pay attention to what shoulds are playing out in your mind or in your head when you're not listening to the voice of your heart or your intuition. This is a very, very powerful question right there. So again, you know, meditate on those questions, journal on them, marinate in them, do whatever you can to just allow the answers to come up. Now, with this many stations and squares going on right now, with this full moon chart, of course, as best as you can, remember that each of us is experiencing these energies in one way or another. And so, you know, some of us may feel overwhelmed. Some of us may feel anxious at this time. Some of us may even have vertigo because the moon is in Libra. So we're, we're continuously trying to find a balancing point. And so as best as you can, therefore, you know, practice self-care as much as possible be compassionate with yourself and others. And if someone doesn't return your call, it's not personal. Just remember, they may not be able to at this point right now because there's too much going on for, for all of us right now. So we will go over the upcoming retrograde phases in more detail in the next forecasting forum, as I've already mentioned. So if you want to know how the Mercury retrograde is affecting you personally, the Pluto station retrograde, you know, those are the two things we're going to focus on the most, but we'll also cover the, the full moon a little bit to see how that applies to your natal chart. So next forum again, Wednesday, April 12th, 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time, 10 p.m. London time. And for more information, go to my website at astrologercoach.com. Okay, and I will, again, I will talk more about that in a few few seconds. But to sum it all up for this full moon, you know, double check whether you're coming from love or fear. This is really important. I mean, this is always important, of course, but, you know, especially with that Pluto station that, and, and with Pluto being the focus point of that T-square, you know, remember also that impatience is a form of fear as well. And with Saturn and Sagittarius right now squaring Venus in Pisces, there might be that sense of like, you know, I want to move forward quicker. I need to manifest something faster. And, and that's impatience when we're not trusting the divine timing of things. Because impatience is the fear that the timing or pace of things is not right. You know, that it's, that it's moving too slowly. 
we're assuming in that moment that if we're going at the pace that we're currently going, that that's not perfect, that that's not in alignment with our higher selves. So that's something to take a look at and to investigate as well. Now, if you have an ascendant or any personal planets in 17 to 24 degrees of Aries, Libra, Capricorn, or Cancer, then this full moon is definitely going to be felt by you quite strongly. But even if you don't have personal planets or points in those degrees and signs, the natal houses in your birth chart affected by this full moon indicate which areas of your life need integration for the next two weeks. So take a look in your birth chart. If you have your birth chart in front of you, you take a look 21 and a half degrees of Libra and Aries. Where do those two points fall in your birth chart? And, and how can you create a balance or integrate those two areas of your life? And if you'd like to dig into that, I want to once again recommend watching uh, my video on how to read your birth chart. And if you don't have a birth chart yet, then uh, definitely watch my video on how to read your birth chart. At the end of this video, I will give you clues on how to get a birth chart for free online or via a phone app. And just feel free to email us at info at astrologercoach.com and just write recording in the subject line. And then my assistant will email you that video with some handouts. And this is also, by the way, guys, this is a great, great video to watch before you join my monthly forecasting forums, whenever you want to join them. And if you've been thinking about doing that, I want to encourage you to watch that video first. And I also uh, want to talk a little bit about the monthly forecasting forums right now. Now, I want you to know that these forums are really, really supportive. This is why I created them. And it is really the next best thing besides getting a one-on-one -on -one reading with me. And obviously, it's also much more cost effective. And so take advantage of this format because we will be looking at our own birth charts actively. You can ask questions and interact with me during the forum. And we will look to see how the upcoming energies each month impact us personally by looking at where these energy patterns land in our birth charts. So since we have a Mercury retrograde in Taurus right now and a Pluto station and retrograde coming up, um, I, I will be talking about those two things in more detail. And we will also mention the full moon in more detail in connection to our birth charts. So I want to encourage you to join us so that you can see where these planetary movements are impacting you personally. So again, it's Wednesday, April 12th, as I already mentioned, 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time, 10 p.m. London time. And you can sign up to join the webinar live. Or if these times don't work for you, I also want to encourage you to sign up for the video recording of these webinars because they are just as valuable because you can ask questions in advance and you still get to look at your own birth chart definitely valuable and it's only $24 for the 90 minutes and sometimes we even go over the 90 minutes sometimes it gets you know to be almost two hours with questions being answered and everything so feel free to register now at astrologercoach.com and please also please 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 fill out the online form as well at the bottom of the monthly forecasting forum page as well as making your payment because that form informs me whether you'll be joining live or not. And you can also get the chance to ask your question in advance, which is especially valuable if you can't make it to the live class. Uh, but even for those of you who join live, you know, I want to encourage you to ask questions in advance so that way I can definitely get to your question. You can also join me for daily forecasts on my Facebook fan page or on Twitter. Those are always available, you know, because I will I post every single day what's coming up for that day. So that's a really great way to stay in touch with the universal energies and know what's going on, you, you know, energetically speaking. And again, all the questions from this video are also available on my website at astrologercoach.com via my weekly forecast after April 9th. And you can also sign up for them to receive them via email. If you email us at info at astrologercoach.com and just write weekly forecasts in the subject line. All right. Now, if you don't want to receive weekly forecasts from me, if you don't want to get an email every single Sunday evening from me, then sign up for my newsletters. I only send those out twice a month. And the newsletter is all about my videos, special offers, announcements that I make about 
either my courses, the monthly forecasting forums, my business, you know, anything like that. So if you're interested in being, you know, in touch with me around those things, then uh, definitely sign up for the newsletter. And if you have any general questions about the full moon or about astrology for me, feel free to email me at sonia at astrologercoach.com. That's S-O-N-J-A at astrologercoach.com. I'm always happy to answer general questions. However, if it is a personal question that requires of me to pull up your birth chart, I will ask you to book a reading at astrologercoach.com just so I can honor my time and make sure that to also answer your question fully and completely. And if you have any questions connected to what's coming up within the next 30 days, then definitely join the monthly forecasting forum. That's the best platform to ask questions connected to the upcoming energies. All right. So have a fantastic, fantastic full moon. Remember, it's an extroverted time. It's a time where we go and connect with other people, with the outside world. And so, uh, you know, see if you can do that in a, in a harmonious way, of course, with the moon being in Libra, right? And, and see if you can find a balance uh, between all the things that are going on for the next couple of weeks. So have a good one. This is astrologer coach Sonia Francis. Goodbye.